Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and a quick question, did Russia hack U.S. gas pipelines? Ladies and gentlemen, that's a question I don't really ask myself every day when I wake up, but I figure with everything, you know, sort of under the eye of cybersecurity and computers being hacked day in and day out, uh, yeah, it's a question I should be asking myself at least weekly. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Colonial Pipeline is one of the United States' biggest gas pipeline systems out on the planet, all right, out in the world. Now, of course, here's a quick rough graph, you know, it's a source from the actual company itself, where one of their main pipelines uh, goes from New Jersey all the way down to good old Texas. Of course, of course, as you can see, it's a pretty long pipeline, and because of a recent hack, they had to briefly shut it down, okay? About 100 gigabytes of data was ransomed and stolen from these individuals. Now, I've already sort of read somewhere that people are trying to stockpile gas. Currently, everything seems to be relatively fine. We're in the recovery phase. Currently, from what I can see, there are some shortages right now in, like, North Carolina, and that's because of, like, uh, the, the pipeline actually shutting down. Now that it's back up, it's still going to take a few days for everything to just properly mellow out. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the Colonial Pipeline system was hacked, and to start off with, the FBI gave a statement, all right, they said the FBI confirms two days ago that the dark side ransomware is responsible for the compromise of the Colonial Pipeline networks. We continue to work with the company and our government partners on the investigation. So clearly it's being investigated, and if I, I wish I had a sample to show you, um, but I really don't, all right, and the reality of it is, is that it's a very, very specific malware that that's uh, out there. Um, and it's run by an actual cyber cartel that's actually real, okay? They're not, they're not, it's not a fake thing. This isn't like the 99% of, you know, deep web rule that I have where this is fake, this is fake. No, it's a real group. And I'll show you some proper evidence. Now, this is a Onion link that leads to Dark Side website. This is the name of the cyber cartel behind this, confirmed at least by the FBI, okay? This is what they're saying. Now, they have apparently, you know, stated, let's start, let's read the mission statement for this hacker group. We are a new product on the market, but that does not mean that we have no experience and we came from nowhere. We've received millions of dollars profit by partnering with other well-known crypto lockers. We created Darkside because we didn't find the perfect product for us. Now we have it. So they made their own, boys. Now, of course, they have some principles. They're not they're not evil hackers, apparently. No, they have a moral compass. They will not carry attacks on medicine, so hospitals, nursing homes, you know, companies that participate in production of vaccines. All right. Funeral services, okay, morgues, crematoriums, funeral homes, education like schools and universities, nonprofit organizations, and anything in the government sector. We only attack companies that can pay the requested amount. We do not want to kill your business. Before any attack, we carefully analyze your accountancy and determine how much you can pay based on your net income. So their, their goal is to just siphon a little bit of the cream from the top of U.S. corporation pie. Now, to understand, Muda, of course anybody can say anything. Are they real? Well, let me look at their actual leaks. Yes, they seem to be real. Now, they've been posting pretty fucking frequently. 2021, you can see that they've attacked imagetech.com, mura.com.br, INH Brown Limited at points downloading 900 gigabytes of sensitive data. What's in there? Well, they had the full company dump for the last three years, contracts, commercial data, personal data, accounting data, much more. And they're publishing more and more day after day. So I'm going to open up one of these just to, again, confirm it's real. To open up INH Brown, they actually are legit showing you exact folders of all of this. Now, some of this I'm going to have to blur out. I'm going to have to see what I have to blur out because it does have sensitive names, but these are real. And how can I tell you that it's real? Because you can download this in the next two days. All right. You can download a bunch of stuff right now. Okay. For instance, here at Mora, they've given their zip files. Now, from what I've understood, these people did not pay the ransomware fee. Okay. So you can just click on any of these links and download gigabytes upon gigabytes of, you know, confidential document files all right so these people are actually the real deal 100 percent so now that we've confirmed that this is a real group all right so the whole story here is that they hacked a company known as colonial pipeline okay these people basically are, are a gas pipeline company and they do serve critical parts of u.s you know infrastructure okay they actually service a few airports even this is a big deal okay this is a big company so they were attacked and basically they shut down portions of their network because usually when you get attacked in something like this the first thing is is to identify which of the systems has been hacked initially 
locally and to also start isolating and disconnecting systems from the internet and also disconnecting the various backups that you have. Because usually when you're dealing with cyber cartels like this, not only will they run a ransomware system on you, but they're going to aggressively find all of your backups to make sure that you can't just simply turn down the network, re-image your systems and get back up and running, okay? Now, while I wish I had a sample to necessarily show you regarding this, um, unfortunately, because of the cyber cartel's nature and uh, how unique they are, and really every sample that you're going to be hitting is really different between, you know, attack to attack. There are great, you know, cybersecurity firms like Acronis that have done a general look at how the system works. And that's pretty much the important aspect of it, right? So here with Darkseid, they have determined that it was discovered in August of 2020. Okay, it targets only English speaking countries while avoiding former Soviet countries. Now, this is where the sort of the Russia influence comes from, where the Russia blame sort of comes out to. I kind of want to speculate on this a bit further too, but let's get out of it. It doesn't attack hospitals, hospices, schools, universities, nonprofit organizations, and government agencies. It uses Salsa 20 with a custom matrix and RSA uh, 1024 encryption algorithms, which is cream of the crop. You're not going to bypass it with, you know, whatever brute force software you think Hollywood is creating. Ransoms exist from 200000 to $2 million. Again, depending on how large your organization is. They do a thorough accounting, apparently. So first things first, they do a UAC bypass, all right, which you can read the code for right here, roughly of what they're trying to do. But essentially, bottom line is they're trying to bypass elevation permissions, okay? Now, this is relative to Windows 10, and hopefully, at least a crony thinks that it is patched from what it is, but, but this is just generally one of their first vectors going in for, further. Now, of course, once they do that, they start doing a locale check, all right, which they're trying to basically check the system, and they have a whitelist, right? So if your system's locale matches what's on their whitelist, you will not be attacked by the ransomware. Now, what does a whitelist consist of, okay? So these are the languages that Darkseid's ransomware will not attack if it detects as defaulted on your system. So this includes Russian, Ukrainian, Belarusian, Tajik, Armenian, Azerbaijani, Latin, Georgian, Kazakh, Kyrgyz, Cyrillic, Turkmen, Uzbek, Latin, Tatar, Romanian, Moldova, Russian Moldova, Azerbaijani Cyrillic, Uzbek Cyrillic, and Syrian Arabic. So if those languages are present on the system, it will not attack. Then it logs, all right, and the log is where it empties your cycle bin, uninstall services, deletes shadow copies, very important, terminates processes, starts a few IO threads, and starts encrypting file after file. And then it encrypts your network shares as well. So again, it's a very thorough encryption. If you get attacked by this and you don't have offsite backups that are regularly maintained, it can be a bad time. Again, any company that's not doing that last bit probably shouldn't be in the business anyways. Now, then they terminate several processes to unlock the files with those user data, okay? Things like Firefox, Notepad, SQL, Excel, all of that stuff. Anything that you would find in a corporate computer anyways. Darkseid does not touch system and team viewer processes. So team viewer is exempt and many of these processes like team viewer are exempt primarily so that they can reinfect or reconnect to the system sometime down the road. Of course, once that's all done, uh, it encrypts all of your files. Now think about all the time I've shown you actual ransomware samples on this channel. Like when we looked at ransomware, for instance, right? It basically gave a suffix at the end of a file with like dot ransom. What you're seeing over here is dot 29 BE 39 one F. It's a custom user extension that's always added for each of these systems. Now here's where they give you the actual ransom note, right? So they tell you what happened. Welcome to dark. Your computers and services are encrypted. Backups are deleted. We use strong encryption algorithms. Oh boy, so you cannot decrypt your data, but you can restore everything by purchasing a special program for us, a universal decryptor, which is created specifically for all the different ransomwares that they launch. You can't just download one decryptor and run it on everyone infected. That would be fucking stupid. What they create is they look at how they encrypted your system and then they create a decryptor associated to it. It's not necessarily the most difficult thing to do, but that's how the system works. They will give everyone their own special decryption program once they have paid the sum that they're asking for. Now, when you're looking into this whole system even further, one of the ransoms that they provide you, all right, one of the screens is this is what people are seeing. This is what Colonial Pipeline probably was seeing too. Your network has been locked. You need to pay 2 million. I'm sure for a Colonial Pipeline, it was probably like 30 or 40 or something. After payment, we'll give you a universal decryptor, right? And then, believe it or not, they have their own chat support system too. So imagine, this is such an amazing cyber cartel. They've got their own fucking chat client, probably an AI, 
but I've never really seen this before. They had their own chat client as well, so you can communicate right with the cyber criminals that are actually stealing and ransoming your data. Now, to understand, these kind of cyber attacks happen a lot, okay? Like, people who think that this is a rarity, it's just not, okay? Cyber attacks happen on a daily basis, all right? There is a constant amount of cyber warfare that exists between the United States, China, Russia, uh, Iran, North Korea, basically any developed country that has the ability to hack one another, okay? Now, to look at this whole situation, we use the term nation state when we looked at solar winds, right? Like, it was such a massive hack. In this, it really does appear to be a group of criminals, like many other criminals online, committing these ransomware attacks. Ransomware is boring when you have looked at it like 10, 20 times, but the important part is it's profitable, okay? So these people have probably made hundreds of millions of dollars if not doing this nonsense to begin with companies that get attacked and they're given bills of like one million dollars when they're making billions every year will probably actually end up paying the one fucking million dollars you know if they if they just didn't have a proper cybersecurity team positioned in the first place right if they didn't have off-site backups maintained regularly okay if they just weren't able to some companies would be willing to pay for it okay small businesses to large the like now alongside getting really really rich the idea of this being a Russian attack is one that I'm still questioning, all right? The only damning silver bullet regarding that has been how this virus checks for system locale, and most of these are obviously uh, Russian or Cyrillic languages. Now, to be honest, most cyber attacks, when I'm witnessing that happen of this scale, come from either the United States, Russia, or China against one another, right? Or North Korea or Iran. These are like sort of the big five that I constantly sort of keep in my head. Now, there's nothing that sort of stops, uh, for instance, the Chinese from, you know, implementing English as sort of the whitelisted language when they could be attacking the Russians, right? You understand that? There could be a lot of things that are out there to throw off the trail from investigators around. But from the origin point of what it looks like, this does seem to actually be Russian in origin, which is expected. A lot of these cyber attacks can be from the from either big three country, okay? To understand, everyone attacks each other, okay? The U.S. attacks Russia, Russia attacks the U.S., China attacks each other, probably themselves too. Who knows? It's a weird, wacky world out there in computer cybersecurity. But yes, the U.S. pipeline was hacked, one of the big U.S. pipeline providers, and this would be one of the largest historical cyber attacks on U.S. critical infrastructure. Kind of scary times that we live in, but luckily, no fear, it was pretty much resolved in days, okay? The FBI is on it, and when the FBI is on it, and especially something of this magnitude has occurred, I'm actually waiting for a couple of years to pass when I start seeing people from Darkseid actually being indicted once this investigation is all handled. Because really, it's not just the FBI behind it, it's probably mostly every country that's involved in cyber attacks. Because if this isn't political, if this isn't a nation state thing, everyone has to lose from it, okay? Everyone has something to lose. So it's interesting to see just how it's going to be handled years down the road when there are actual convictions being taken place, right? Whether they come from the US, Russia, China, Iran, North Korea, or whatever country involved into it. So ladies and gentlemen, let's sit back, relax, and take a sigh of breath because gas is not in a massive shortage yet. So ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahar, and if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. I am out.